DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and DJ and TV Insider. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's Brian B. and Casey. That sucked just as much as the other ones did. I'll go yeah. practice. Is that it? Are we actually live? You are. You, you just pushed me right to the edge, and now I'm all stressed out. I'm going to go cry. Have nice to see you. We've put another one over the top. All right. How are we doing, Brian? I don't think we're live yet. Are we? Are we, John? Yes, you are. Oh, we're live. You are live. Oh, we are. It's the well, a delay, high production value of this show that I. I'm that sorry, I, I didn't have time so enough to cut down to count down because you guys were talking and I didn't want to interrupt. I was being very gentlemanly. <laughs> he has uh, no control. Absolutely no control of what's going on. It's summer. It's summer. Summer hiatus already. Got it. <laughs> so we're in reruns. For those of you that are watching this, we recorded this in January, so this is a rerun. It's still snowing outside. <laughs> right now people are going is he serious i thought this was live so anyhow oh, how you doing brian good man it's a, a good week been in, weather's been nice in new york i uh, can't complain man it's been uh like beautiful i mean no humidity whatsoever uh just beautiful days how about you same here in fact i, I walked in the office yesterday and i turned to everybody and go we're shutting the place down and my bookkeeper looks at me and goes, what? I go, it's too nice to be working. It is. It is. She goes, are, are you serious? I'm like, you can stay. We're all going to leave. <laughs> Seriously? No. Because <laughs> I have Marquee coming up in just three short weeks. Uh, cheap plug, cheap plug, cheap plug, cheap plug. And as I've told everybody every week, I need the money. And I know that Donnie Lewis, who's watching with us right now, needs people to sign up for his workshop. Show Donnie some love. And uh, sign up for his workshop on advanced uh, projector mapping Tuesday night at the Marquee Show. There you go. So, yeah. So, um, how was your weekend? I know it's Thursday. It feels weird, but since we're only on weekly. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I had an event or not this weekend. Kentucky oh, I did. Yeah, I was Kentucky. in Kentucky. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I was I'll in Louisville. You, I'll let um, you know what you were doing. Yeah. It was fun. Um, very unique vibe it was supposed to be it was a rehearsal dinner after party so okay. i'm thinking it's gonna be you know lots of dancing uh like a small little club feel it was in a museum uh, that was an art art museum installation okay. came in i was working with a, a really good planner but it was nothing like i thought it was no it was not set up for a dance floor okay. so it was just kind of one of those things where you had to call an audible and just you know throw away every idea that you had going in and just play off the vibe and so I did it for about two hours. And then I was like, this last hour, forget it. I don't care if there's couches. We're going to get these people dancing. And sure enough, that worked. And uh, right. it was a great night. So, so you trashed a bunch of furniture. And now the yeah. company is mad at you. Pretty much. Pretty much. It was in and out. In and out. Good. So, uh, And then Saturday, I had to do um, a teaching thing at NYU. So I spoke to a bunch of wedding planners, uh, which was good. And yeah, it was pretty much my weekend. So... I got an event tonight, so as soon as this is over, eleven o'clock, I'm on at uh, for an after party event for a, an award show uh, that's happening here in the city. So everybody watching, I want you to make sure you comment saying, "Please, Brian, don't leave." Please, yeah, encore, encore, encore. <laughs> How about you? Do you have a, an events this weekend or? 
Uh, this weekend was crazy for me. Um, tragically, uh, my business partner in my flower shop, Dina's mother, went into hospice on Thursday mm. uh, after a long struggle with uh, cancer. Um, she has joined her own parents and is up in in heaven. That's what I believe. You know, I know mm-hmm. that there's others that uh, don't feel that way, but um, she went into hospice Thursday. Um, I told Dina, just go be with her family. We'll get through the weekend. So I had to do my responsibility this past weekend plus hers. And she takes care of the fashion element of mm-hmm. all of our bridal shows. We had a bridal show at Potawatomi Casino up in uh, the beautiful city of Milwaukee this past weekend. And so it was, it was a little bit chaotic, but we got it done, which is the most important thing. And then uh, we had floral going out all over the place. So we made it happen. And then we prepped already for this week because, um, in fact, I'm actually not wearing a Cubs shirt today because I had uh, just came back from her mother's celebration of life event. And uh, so I was there supporting Dina because she's good people. And I know that a lot of you guys have met her. Uh, so, um so that was that. So it was very, very hectic. Monday was one of those days where I was so ungodly sore and tired. I just wanted to stay in bed, but not knowing what this week was going to be like for her, we had to, I, I didn't have that luxury. So I got up, got in, made it happen. And uh, this weekend, I'm DJing tomorrow night. Nice. Downtown, uh, downtown Chicago, doing a wedding at the Ivory Room. And then uh, Saturday, I'm delivering flowers. And as of right now, my brother, who is a father, and my father, who is a father, um, they don't want to do anything on Sunday. So Sunday, I have the day off to just chill. And and so I'm not going to complain. I'm going to take it nice and slow and easy and try to wrap up some more stuff with the show and just kind of do the voodoo I do here. So Maybe go to Bath, Bath, Bed Bath & Beyond, maybe Home Depot if you have some time. Or watch Old School. <laughs> Gonna be really nice. So one of my favorites. Really yeah. nice mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So oh, man. now um last week we talked about customer service and my nightmare with Comcast. <laughs> and uh I'm happy to announce that we are leaving Comcast tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. as uh wow cables coming in to switch things over. I have to tell you, from a completely common sense business point of view as frustrated as I have been this whole week, Mm -hmm. I have never enjoyed making people feel more uncomfortable in management than I have with Comcast. Right. Because So for those of you that don't know, they exit, I'm switching and they got a port. uh, It's called porting your numbers over. So they got notified by wow cable that they, we want to port our numbers over. Right. So we're leaving it. We're taking the numbers with us over to wow. And so I got an email confirming that I was doing that. I said, yes, we will be leaving. And I am paid through the end of July. They turned my phones off last Thursday. I didn't have them on for a day and a half. And if you watch last Thursday's show, I had been put on hold for an hour and a half. And we kept showing my cell phone every, what, 15 minutes and stuff. What you guys didn't see, which I wish we we have recorded, it'd be nice if we could have a blooper reel. (laughs) After the show's over, typically we kind of chat about how the show went and um, what we would do differently next time. So it's like a three-hour call. Um, But like five minutes after we got off the air, the the guy from Comcast picked up and Brian and John heard me just berate this guy, for lack of a better word. So... (laughs) It was pretty funny. So, so the rest of this week, I've just turned around and been very polite, but matter of fact with Comcast saying, okay, I can show you my tax returns. I can show you what we do in this per day. You cost us $5,000. How are you going to make it up to us? And they go, well, we can't tell you. No, 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 you can. I said, according to everything I did the research on, I go, you have 135,000 employees. You netted, you did a net of $23 billion last year. You can write me a check. And they go, but I I go, but you can, that's the way it is. So I've positioned myself with these people where there's absolutely positively under no circumstances, any way that they can say no to me other than company policy. 
And so we'll see what happens. I was supposed to get a phone. I did. I will say this. I keep getting referred to a higher and higher and higher manager. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm dealing with like the executive director of the entire Chicago division. And they're supposed to be going to corporate and, you know, cause she can't even give me a reason as to why what I'm asking for is illogical. I'm asking for like a hundred thousand dollars for pain and suffering or whatever. I said to her, I'll give you my tax returns. I'll show you what I lost. You, you can do the math for yourself. And you know, she's like, so. something tells me that ain't coming to your, your I don't bank know. Account. You know what? I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay. I even went as far to say to her, I still have Comcast at home and my mother has Comcast. I'll even let you divide up the balance of what I'm asking for amongst my home and my mother's home. And we'll just have Comcast for free for the next like three years, whatever comes out. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving them every reason for them not to say no to me. So we'll see yeah. what happens. We yeah. will see. But the lesson here is, and you went through something similar this past weekend, we all make mistakes. Okay. How we handle those mistakes really determines the level of service that you give. And every show that I do or go to every DJ I meet goes, well, the difference between me and my, uh, my competition is the level of service we meet. And what's funny is very few people can ever give me black and white definitive ways that they are superior. And for a long time, you know, I had people bragging about that. They answered their phone. Like, mm. And I'm like, really? Right. Like, does that make you the best of the knot? Cause you answered your phone compared to a part-time guy. You know, I mean, I remember right. back in the day, way, way back in the day, I had my phone forwarded to my beeper mm -hmm. back in those days, which had a voicemail on it. And so when I saw that somebody had left a voicemail, it went off on my hip and I was still working a full-time job. I picked up the phone. I called that customer back or I, I would listen to it, call that customer back right away. And, and that was that. So, and that was exemplary service back in 1812. So, right. Right. You know, so, right. and you had a not so great experience this weekend, right? With again, poor customer service from your rental car. Yeah. <laughs> it was brutal. So Louisville was super humid and uh, they gave us this nice infinity vehicle and I get in this car. It's a 2018. I'm driving to the venue to go set up. I don't have a whole lot of time and all I'm getting is hot air. And I'm like, I must not be able to figure this thing out because it's a brand new car. I'm like, there's got to be a button I'm not hitting. And it's just throwing out hot air and all of a sudden it was like a lexus or something wasn't it? yeah it was like it's an car. infinity like yeah. suv nice, nice brand yeah yeah so long story short uh i got to the venue i just had to set up i'm leaving we're gonna go get something to eat with my my guy that i brought out with me and um it i'm like am i not figuring this out can you just pull and we are like literally getting heated with one another <laughs> no pun intended just because it, it was just so hot in there and yeah. uh, so i call the hertz up they tell me that uh my only option is to bring it back to the airport i'm like listen i have very little time to get back and change and come back i don't have time for that is there any way you can fix this and they said nope uh so we had to drive all the way back they did give me a 50 dollar voucher but that still didn't, uh, didn't didn't uh you know, make up for it. So of course, when I got that nice little, uh, radar service email, Oh, I surely gave them a nice little rating and comment card because you know the I mean, worst part about that is when you do that and they ask you for the feedback, when you say that you have a customer service issue, it's almost a bigger kick to the nuts when you don't get a follow-up. Right. Which okay? I did. And yeah. it, that's horrific. I mean, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times, and again, mostly Comcast. And right. even in your presentation, you use a different cable company, but yeah. there's an underlying theme typically. All right. That All right. A challenge. So, so yeah. yeah, so customer services weekend, large companies was not, uh, it was not good to either one of us. So. No, but this week we're talking about rebranding. Correct. And this came up because basically if you have been sleeping under a rock and haven't seen the commercials, uh, both on TV, internet, everywhere, IHOP uh, changed. They actually floated it for a little while. They said they're changing their name to IHOP is how they presented it. And everybody was trying to guess what IHOP was. Uh, what did you, did you, did you kind of know what it was going to be? Cause I thought it was going to be international house of breakfast was my, no, was you know what? Cause I came into a kind of mid conversation. I was flipping channels and uh, the local affiliate for Fox already had 
they had um, IHOB had, uh-huh. had, had brought the entire set hamburgers as part of the promotion. Ah. So they must have been rolling this out with like every, you know, you brought it up and and I was aware of it. And this is what's kind of good. We haven't talked about it. Right. And so we have a difference of opinion on it. Right. I think it's brilliant. OK, I right. think that it is an incredibly smart move. And the more research that I've done on it, the more that, you know, it, it, there's no question. It's a marketing gimmick. There's no. Oh, yeah, absolutely. About it. Totally. Here's the thing, though, from a PR point of view, it's worked because it's brilliant from a PR per- perspective. Right. I agree. It's, except for a viral video where like Brian Bonacisi is wasted at 3.30 in the morning and he's throwing pancakes at a server yeah. that's gone viral somewhere. You don't see anything about IHOP. No. And, no. you know, to me, it's pretty hard to ruin a pancake. So yeah, IHOP is definitely on the bottom of my food chain as far as where I'm going. So is Denny's, so is Shoney's. Yeah. Waffle House is a guilty pleasure when I'm south. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that, you know, you can't you can't deny the fact that it was on social media. It's been right. on local affiliates. So right now, how it transcends into sales, we'll find out and we'll follow right. up in a couple of weeks and we'll right. keep our eyes peeled to see if I hob puh, is um, showing some some growth or or giving some feedback. So, but going back to it, IHOB, the way they presented it initially was that they're changing their name. It was right. definitely the, like we're permanently going to change it. And everyone's like, it was in an uproar, which was brilliant, totally right. brilliant marketing. Then you find out it's just temporary. Cause I'm thinking, gosh, they're changing signage. They're changing all their menus. Everything is going to be changing. And I just was like, wow, it's gotta be breakfast. Cause I can't imagine them getting away, you know, rid of pancakes. So, now to find out that it's temporary and that it's burgers, I was which was already on their menu. This is not a new menu item. This is something that they already offer. Right. For me, I was. But no, they, of, it's not. It's not the same thing. They they've created. They changed the patty. Yeah, they got a, so they got a high quality patty signature, whatever. Right. I mean, listen. But to me, okay, go on. I was gonna say, if they were a brand new company. Or they're doing a complete rebrand and a different focus. Totally get it. Like, brilliant move. I just think that everybody, like, they're not going to move the needle. I don't think much. And maybe they get a little bump just initially because, hey, I'll check the burger out. But long term, I don't see this being something that, I mean, for me, I would, I don't like you. It's the bottom of the food chain. I don't even go there even if I want to. I mean, if it's the only thing left, I'll go to Taco Bell if I have to, you know, which I don't even like them. But I'm just saying, I would, I, it would be the only thing open for me to go to IHOP. So them adding burgers isn't going to change the needle for me. And I just wonder how many people that's going to change the needle for. So it just seemed like an odd marketing play for a company that's well known already. They're well established. This isn't going to change, you know, top of mind to uh, like, it, like, it was almost like, Oh, Hey, yeah, it's uh, it would be somebody, it'd be like somebody saying, you know, Santa Claus in July is, is making an appearance. Okay. Yeah. It's a good reminder, but it's not like I'm going to go buy Christmas gifts all of a sudden in July. It's not going to change anything there. It's not going to change anything with IHOP for me either. So I'm wondering like from the perspective of brand awareness, did they really need it? Did they really need to be spending this kind of money to just, Oh, Hey, we're here letting you know, but hang on a second. We don't know what they spent. So, I mean, let's put it this way. I saw more of it on viral video and in press releases and things along those lines than I did being spent on commercials. And I'll be honest, like, except for the Super Bowl, I did, I have a DVR. I, I can't stand anything. Goodbye, Zinni. Sorry. One of my florists was leaving with her beautiful little daughter. It's summer. Um, so what ends up happening was, uh, um, you know, I fast forward through everything. So if there was a commercial, I didn't see it. All I saw was the PR end of it. And so I don't know. I mean, I mean, even going into the DJ world, you know, there's no question. Marcello Pedalino has been peddling his book, uh, Celebrate Life Now, for two years. Right. He's been on morning shows all over the country. I don't know if he's selling any books or not. I couldn't tell you. But, right. You know, but. But great. Think- Go ahead. I think that it's a, it's a good branding thing. I mean, Rob Ferre's been on 
Good Morning Utah or whatever countless times now. And he re- he rebrands it or he re- he reposts it on his social media. So again, but we're talking about someone's business. So like you great segue into DJ world, because that's kind of where I was going with it. My thought was if this was in the DJ world and you were going to rebrand or do a marketing gimmick, right? Would changing your name, let's say, you, I mean, what would it be? The equivalent would be like, oh, hey, I'm going to add up lighting or I'm going to, it's already on my menu. It's already on my menu of services. It's my photo booth. So instead of uh, KC Entertainment, we're going to call it KC Photo Booths. And uh, we're going to try to get this out there. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me that you're, 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 you're unless, you know, I don't know. I just but don't see. The thing. But I think, and again, I'll, I'll use my own life. My very first company was called Spin and Discs, and mm-hmm. I start and I, I gave my notice to the company I worked for February first, nineteen ninety, and I was up and running right away. Okay, CDs were a big deal then; they were eighteen dollars. It was top of the line technology. There was no question about it. And the funniest part about it is I started on twelve hundreds with records, but I called the company Spin and Disc. But it was what was hip and popular and everything else. Randy Bartlett. His first company was called Old Time Old Time Rock and Roll DJ Service. And again, things get outdated. And even when you and I briefly talked about, from a branding point of view, your company, B-Boy Productions, mm-hmm. before I knew you and I knew of you, and right. I saw you speak and you said you're with B-Boy, my initial thought was that you had a hip hop flavor and that you had a right. whole bunch of... Asian and black break dancers. And I don't mean this in a mean way. Like no, no, no. You're, you're totally right. I get it all the time. Yeah. And, and there's a story behind it, but yeah. I'll right. And so, you know, I thought like you had like break dance troops and it was, and again, I met you in Atlantic city. Right. Bar mitzvah world, everything else. So I didn't know where you were from. I was just told by Mike Walter, this guy that's on before you, you're going to want to sit on a seminar because he's really well uh, spoken. And, um, and that's how, you know, you and I talked and that's how we met and we've right. been love ever since. Yeah. But, um, but no, I mean, it's, uh, it's just one of those things. And so, so do I look at it as they started out as a pancake place and, you know, back in the day in 1912 when they started the place or whatever, right. did it work? Yeah. Does it work now? No. But again, if they're calling attention to it and listen, look at the amount of DJs that are now calling themselves production companies. Right. Because they own some uplights and they own two movers. Okay. But You're not a production is, company. But the difference is, is that they are making a permanent rebrand. They're not doing it for a marketing gimmick. They're not changing their name for 30 months and then all of a sudden going back to the original. If you're doing a complete rebrand, that's a totally different story. I'm totally good if they were to go call themselves International House of Burgers permanently. I think it would be or a if they would, I, I have, they could say breakfast and burgers or. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm fine could, with that. But the, like the fact is, this is only a temporary thing. So my question is, so do, you get, do you get mad at Christmas when people put up decorations temporarily? No, because it's, it's constantly going to be that every Christmas. So if they were to do it every summer, okay, but they're not, they're doing this for a slow promotion, which it seems like it's a kind of an odd oddity because I haven't seen that done. And, and I don't see how the ROI on that would come out to be something that would be worth it at the end of the day. Well, we don't know what they spent and well, it, it and can't be cheap, like, right? Well, I mean, look at the airtime, right? But again, we don't know what they spent and we don't know how quickly they would get it back. And it's the same thing with, uh, let's even go to DJs, although some people now have the, you know, you have B-Boy Productions and some people are spinning it where it's like weddings by B-Boy, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's more wedding specific. So is this IHOP a division of IHOP kind of like, I mean, listen. The bottom right. line is they're on TV. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and if yeah. they can drive, if, if they get people scratching their heads going, well, it's inexpensive and I'm sick of everything around. I'll give it a shot. Right. You know, now obviously if they deliver, well, yeah, they're in good shape. If they don't deliver, then they're just the Comcast of, of, you know, right. mass produced diner food. That's all. Yeah. So if you were to give this to a, this concept to a DJ company, how would you, I'm trying to give some takeaways here. So how would you use this same kind of thing for a DJ company? Cause if it does go through and it's genius, right. uh, then I think we should, I mean, the, the common thing would be to learn from a company like this and try to figure out a way to 
spin it for, no pun intended, for your DJ company? How would you kind of utilize this in the DJ world? Is there a way? Does this? Does this? I don't, I don't know if it would be a permanent. Listen, I don't know that it would be a permanent. I, I think in the DJ or the wedding world, I think that um, you're looking at rebranding on a permanent basis. But at the same point in time, let's be honest, if you had B-Boy Productions at a bridal show, mm-hmm. your look, your vibe, how you dress is going to be different than if you had B-Boy Productions at a school orientated show where you were trying to do large scale production. Your booth would look different. Everything right. would be different. Your materials would still have the name on it, but it might be bright MTV looking, rock concert looking, you know, very production orientated, lots of trust, lots of led lots of everything whereas on the wedding end i would think you'd probably go a little bit more on the elegant side and maybe have your guys dressed in black suits or something cool but right elegant so the question being is are you doing the same thing you know and are you calling it i don't know the the scratch academy by b-boy just for that division you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so i think that it, it works. And again, I think that if you said photo booths by B-Boy mm-hmm. branded your, you know, you had postcards that it just let people know that you're not just a DJ company that offers photo booths, but you're a photo booth company. Like you have, I guess with the way that I view this thing with IHOB is they're saying that their burgers are as good as anybody else's that you're going to go have lunch at. Mm-hmm. So why not come to IHOB? And where it pertains to a uh, the DJ world is there are plenty of DJs that might be handing out one sheeters at bridal shows or sending out email blasts saying that their uplighting is as good as any decor company you're going to look at mm-hmm. or their photo booth is any is just as good as any other, you know, specific photo booth company. And it might be true and it may not be true. You know, it could be some hack DJs got, you know, some old school par 38 can still with gels in them and right you know and then someone's gonna get burned or cut or whatever i I don't know and again i'm not i'm not questioning the quality of uh ihop there was a part of me that thought about going there before and actually eating it or even jokingly bringing one here so i could (laughs) hold a hamburger up but you know again people also have different tastes like I know we'll get heat for this. I think, and I'm stating it right now, you can keep in and out burger. I think it's total shit. I don't I'll keep get it. The, I'll keep it. I oh, love it. I love it. When you come love to it. Chicago, I'll take it to Portillo's and you'll know what a hamburger should taste like. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just, I don't see anything special about it. And I read an article that one of the reasons that so many people are intrigued by it is because they're only available on the West coast. So when you have friends from the West coast talking about how they love it and it's something specific out there, like deep dish pizza in Chicago, some people uh-huh. go, I don't get it. I don't get what it's all about. I might be the exact same way with, with an out burger, you know, like I, I don't get it. But yeah. Yeah. Again, I'll bring you for deep dish pizza when you're in Chicago for Marquee in July. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be like Casey's right about food <laughs> marketing. Yeah. Thing, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just the way it is. Remember, it's play that funky music, and then brick house. Is no, that what it is? Yes. Okay. It's never the, right. If you do it the opposite way, you're doing it wrong. Okay? Right. Right. Just right. Wrong. Anyhow. Well. So that that was one uh, marketing rebranding thing we we I brought up this week that seemed to attract a little bit of attention. But the other one that I brought up to you, I don't know if you saw that article beforehand or not. But I didn't get a chance to skim it. But we talked about it yesterday. Okay, so Marriott, if you're not familiar with it, to our listeners, um, they're getting killed in the extended stay market for hotels um they just airbnb is crushing them in that regard right just because mainly price and so marriott said we got to do something about this so they're testing this out right now actually in europe they uh have actually um signed with a company uh that is called a uh, host maker and it's a london-based homestay property management company for a six-month trial and what they're going to do is basically uh, cause let me back up one of the issues with Airbnb that I have, and I stay at them all the time when I'm an extended, um, stay somewhere 
is that you never know what you're going to get. It's kind of like DJs to an extent when you see a five star rating, you know, right. everybody gets one. So you're kind of like, well, is it really a five star? And then you, so, and some of them I come in, they've got, uh, you know, water bottles on the, on the, in the room for me. They've got nice, fresh towels. They have soap. Some of them I go into and I barely have a cover, <laughs> you know, on the bed, okay. it's like super thin. It's just awful. So with that, uh, the idea is that Marriott will put their stamp of approval. They'll bring somebody in and it'll be as if this is a Marriott approved place. Right. So that, that way, you know, it's clean, you know, it's uh, got the, the soap in there, you know, it's got like everything that you would come to expect with staying at a Marriott hotel. And their rationale was that this will allow them to at least get a piece of that market that Airbnb is taking. Um, whether they... The question becomes is, are they going to be giving up when they improve the lower quality? Are they going to be now pushing the, the people that stay with them begrudgingly at one of their perhaps their lower or their more economy based brands? Are they going to be pushing those people even further down the food chain? That's the question. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good that is a good question. Um, they could. They could be, but the idea is that they're losing it anyways. They're losing it to Airbnb already. So why not take a piece of it rather than getting crushed completely? The other uh, thing that they floated in some of these articles is that they may go into the real estate business and take over, you know, apartments and things. And if you've got deep pockets, that's one way to go about it. But that's a lot of money out of, ca of cash right out the bat, bat and plus a ton of management and a lot of other things that would go and along the with part it. Is most hotel corporations now aren't, they don't own hotels. They're in the management business. Right. And generally there's like a portfolio, a uh, real estate portfolio group that has chosen to buy the actual hotel itself. And then right. they, have the management company, which is where the term flag comes from, where it's a bad right. flag or a holiday Inn flag or the Bates motel flag or whatever it is. I think for Airbnb though, it would be a plus as well because their product's going to potentially go up, you know, in, in, um, quality and name recognition because now, Hey, it's got a Marriott stamp of approval. It, even if they're giving up a piece of the pie, they're not giving up much for but it to be a better it, experience. What if like, like I can tell you, like I could Airbnb the crap out of my house. Like it's very neutral, very nice, pergo mm -hmm. flooring, you know, cherry wood cabinets, stainless steel appliances, granite countertops. But if somebody comes in and they go to another one and it's super clean, but it's like still shag carpeting and outdated furniture, but it's clean. Mm -hmm. The question being is, at least with a Marriott or a hotel brand, we know kind of a look and a feel typically. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, that's where I, I mean, I think it's a very, very, very interesting concept. Um, and to a degree, it's kind of like, I feel like Marriott is subcontracting people's homes, but giving them a criteria that they have to abide by to be part of their their network no different than a lot of DJ companies or photographers or uh, booking agents do the same thing with independent DJs, which is what you and I talked about a little bit yesterday. Is this the same kind of a thing? I think the difference, however, is one is a tangible, which is a hotel. The other one is a service. So, how well, I I think that people who are homeowners that are that are under the Airbnb umbrella would love to have that stamp of approval because it just it makes their home I don't know more valuable in a sense than maybe getting the the non approval you know what I mean like if they can charge you know 10 more dollars a night it's 10 more dollars in their pocket just by and, and they don't have to do a thing they're literally just having these people come in there and service it and whatever else or meeting but, the but, but at the same point in time Marriott's got to get their piece to the pie Right. So someone's paying more money. So either right. the homeowner is going to make less or the the consumer is going to pay a little bit more. Yeah. So true. Um, true, true I, I had a girl who worked for me that she used to rent her apartment on the weekends, which I found really weird. Right. I mean, it's one thing when you own it, but when you're like renting an apartment and then you're renting it out to somebody else, I mean, if they came in and destroy. I don't know. I, I I've never even stayed at an, at an Airbnb. Um, 
out of convenience, I always jump in the cab at a convention center. Right. Uh, then Uber it. I've taken Ubers and I've never had a bad experience ever. Right. Um, with the exception of one, my subdivision in my townhouse is not too different than a lot where there's similar sounding names. So one Uber driver got very frustrated and I saw him as I was waiting outside. He, I, I'm watching my phone and then it said that he declined taking me when I saw him like two blocks away. I started walking toward a busier intersection. And as I got to go wave him down, I saw him, the, the thing came up that he declined picking me up. So he just had gotten lost and frustrated. So hmm. that's whatever. That's human nature. I mean, that's no big deal because I had somebody else there in five minutes anyway. Right. So we've done this in the DJ world in a sense. And I thought this would be a good takeaway as well, just for those that um, are trying to see the parallel here. Um, so we, we have the B-Boy production brand in the markets that we're in is a pretty, pretty good brand as far as name recognition. But as far as uh, price and stuff goes, we're near the top. So we lose a lot to uh, people who just can't afford us. Um, is typically 90% of the people that we lose uh, as far as clientele goes. So what we did was we created an economy brand uh, that has no affiliation with B-Boy Productions whatsoever from the standpoint of marketing or any kind of um, pictures or anything like that. We, we, we created a sub-brand. And, uh, and the idea behind that was we didn't want to... We wanted to be able to attract... To, to keep our people busy, we wanted to have somewhat of a training ground for some of our younger guys and ladies that were DJing for us, but not, you know, ruin, I don't want to say ruin is not the right word, but we didn't want to confuse the market with, well, hey, why do you have a, a price tag of, I don't know, I don't even remember what we're at, but like, let's say 500 bucks is, is the cheap rate. Um, what, so, so rather than have a $500 package and then all of a sudden it goes up to 1500, we wanted to separate those two completely. So what we've done right. is when someone calls in on this cheaper brand, we say, Hey, listen, we work with B-Boy Productions as an affiliate company. You're going to get a B-Boy Productions branded DJ and people light up because all of a sudden they feel like they're getting a, a premium brand, like a stamp of approval. You're not getting what they would have thought they would have been paying for. And so we're able to capture the market of a lower price point and keep okay. people working now on weekends where let's say we're packed out. Cause people would probably ask that, well, how, what if you, you know, ran out of DJs or whatever? Well, then we block out and say we're completely booked. Unfortunately, we don't have any availability. So we only do this right. on weekends where we're, we're really slow or where we need, uh, we want to fill the spots. And okay. so it's really worked out well for us. And I thought it was kind of a similar situation to an extent because like Marriott branding an Airbnb and saying you got the stamp of approval, we're doing that with with a lower end DJ company because they're getting a like a uh, like a five star experience, but for a, a price that they wouldn't expect. So we, so we were able to make some money rather than sending a home. My whole thing is I'd rather get something of a little and nothing of a lot, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. Well, I'm curious to see what everybody else thinks. So. If you've got opinions on IHOP, IHOP and, uh, and um, the, this Marriott Airbnb concept, you know, I'd love to make sure you post because we'd love to be able to share it and, and kind of go from there. You know, as I told you yesterday, when I owned another company, we had contemplated, we had units next door to each other. One was our production facility, one was our offices, but we had enough room that I was going to just put a small table chairs really simple clean nice easy and we we're going to be called something like signature sound or signature events or i don't know what it was mm -hmm. and it was a simple generic adjective company name and that's what we were going to do in order to try to keep the younger guys busy or compete against ourselves and life got in the way so we didn't uh we didn't make it happen but I, sometimes I, I get it with regard to hotels because you can design them accordingly. Like mm -hmm. you and I talked about, I think it's harder for service because you can't, you know, you, you can't, I mean, like I don't think you can clean the carpets any less if you're a carpet cleaning service or you're not going to cut the lawn as well. If you're, um, you know, if, if you're a cheaper landscaper than the the one doing the country club or what have you so 
So I don't know. It's, it's a tough thing. I'm not saying it's impossible. I know a lot of people have done it. I know a lot of people that have done it have given up their lower end brand because mm -hmm. they just don't feel that it's worth the time and energy. And it's a different kind of clientele that they don't really want to deal with. So right. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, what, who, who's uh, watching us? Who's who's talking on Facebook? Give us some some feedback. Right. So let's see. Jeffrey Powell's got a heart because they said, show me some love so we know you're here. Sean McKee joined in. Gabriel Lozano joined in. Harold Smith says, hey, y'all. Uh, Sean wants to know, how are you, my brother? We're good. Oh, you joined in. Dave Camp joined in. For a second. Um, Sean Frady's miserable. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. So <laughs> he's always miserable. Um, Mike Petritus joined him, but I think he's gone already as well. Everybody, everybody. I hug otters periodically. Okay. Well, that's different. Um, here we go. <clears throat> Let's see. Mike Petritus, who's with Elix Marketing, says it's a fantastic marketing, temporary, but all exposure is great for them at this point. So that could be, but you know what? I don't know about the profitability of IHOP. You know, I don't know because Buffalo Wild Wings just got purchased by Arby's and it was because of uh, financial purposes is what I had heard. So I don't know if IHOP's hurting. Um, is IHOP a franchise or is IHOP a corporate owned? I don't even know. Do you? Uh, I don't know. No idea. I don't know either. Um, Carol Alt joined in. Mike Petritus tagged in somebody. Sean Frady said, "Break dancers must be you and your b boys." Um, let's see. Donnie Donnie says that he created Illuminate Production or Illuminate Projector Projections and Lighting as a separate from your event matters entertainment photo booth only to generate bookings from other DJ companies in my area that don't offer projection lighting. So, so he created a, a, a mini brand so that there was a safe place for people to refer to, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Riley says, happy Thursday. Uh, Sean Frady says, love your energy. <laughs> I'm assuming that's you, not me because I'm lazy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Tyson James Bell Bell says you're right about going with two brands, a cheap one and a class one. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, you know, I don't think there's anybody fighting it or necessarily praising it with all of its, uh, with all of its glory. So, um, so uh, it, it's hard to say this might be one that is not our most interesting show. Um, but I personally, like I said, you and I had, very strong opinions opposite of one another regarding uh, IHOP. So, right. So, well, well, I mean, yeah. Anybody on YouTube have anything to say? Yeah, you got Travis Englehart who's saying that uh, in and out is awful. I agree with Casey, which See? clearly he's he's never experienced a true burger out of SoCal. So I need to make sure he gets down there. Sure. Um, he's probably had Carl's Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but there are Portillo's now in California. Well, somebody yeah. said that there's a Patillo's in Arizona. So, yeah. yeah. So, so now there's a perfect, you want to, if you guys aren't from Chicago, I'm going to ask you to Google Portillo's P O R T I L L O apostrophe S. This guy started, I'm not kidding with a trailer, like an eight by 10 trailer called the Doghouse that was in the parking lot of a gas station. It had no running water in it. They ran a garden hose from the, a gas station and they started selling hot dogs. They sold to, I think it's Berkeley Hashire three, maybe four years ago for $1 billion. The mm. same guy who was schlepping hot dogs in that hot, in that thing, mm. in that little trailer. And he pulled a McDonald's. He owns all the land still. So he kept all of the land. And so He's again, his family didn't want to expand, so they sold it to a um, to a private investment company. And that investment company now, from what I can see, is dropping Portillo's in a lot of cities where Chicagoans have relocated. And um, so there's some in Phoenix, there's some in uh, in L.A. I think there's even some in Florida now. Um, they're going up to Minnesota. They're going out to uh, Wisconsin and 
they're they're crazy crowded. The difference between them and an out burger though is their food is delicious. <laughs> you can you keep go. your animal fries or garbage fries or garbage picked animal crap fries or whatever it is. Yeah, I'll take them. I'll have them all. Send them to my address. I'll I'll post it on YouTube later. Okay, for uh, everybody watching, look at how much I weigh. Look at how much Brian weighs. Who do you think knows more about food? <laughs> if it was about hair, Brian would win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> If it's about food, you lose. I win. <laughs> well, anybody who's gone out to eat with me knows that I, or just gone to any place that I've recommended, knows that I know quality and I will take you to the right spot. So when you come out here to New York, Casey, let me let me show you what real uh, food's like. Next thing you're I'll show you real pizza. Ogre. I'll, show you, Ogre. I'll, get, I'll get you around there. Uh, so, and real hot dogs too, probably, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll I got you, it. I'll give you bagels. I'll give you <laughs> bagels. That's about it. <laughs> so I, in other news, uh, I don't know if you heard this week also, speaking of rebranding, might as well kind of stick into the topic, uh, yep. the mergers that went, that happened this week uh, in the news with AT&T and, and who was it? Uh, was it Time, Time Warner? Warner? Yeah. So, so th I was just thinking about that from the standpoint of uh, branding as well. How would that work? You know, with with that kind of because it seems like a lot of companies have struggled when they've when they've bought other ones out and tried to em, 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 you know infiltrate it into their system, such as the airlines. Like I see that a lot with uh, what was it Southwest Airlines and AirTran at one point. There was just all kinds of well, issues. T-Mobile got bought by Sprint this year too, I believe. Possibly, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm almost positive. So the question is. Will they go the route of like we have US Cellular here in Chicago? I don't know if that's a national brand or a regional brand, but they had gotten bought out by somebody else as well. Um, I forgot whom, but uh, all of a sudden US Cellular was gone. And and you know what? Here's the thing: it's going to be like anything. I mean, look at look at ballparks and stadiums; they're constantly being renamed based on right on um uh sponsorship so people get over it really quickly you know right names right. aren't nearly as important as it once was and uh you know on the same subject i believe rosie o'donnell i'm at rosie, roseanne bar will be on tv again somewhere in some place in time mm -hmm. right Once america forgives her like they forgave charlie sheen like they forgave mel gibson mm -hmm. you know they're gonna be on now right. we'll uh well, what's his name? Don Singer ever own another NBA team? I don't see that happening. Right, right. But um, well, he's like ninety, so we're close, pushing well, close to it. He so. was there, you know, during the Civil War. So and he's about he remembers what it was. And he's about two billion dollars less worth <laughs> at this point. That's, he got divorced in the process too, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think he got caught with his girlfriend, right? Yeah, during yeah. that whole debacle. Yeah, yeah that was crazy. Right. So Crazy. the so the lesson is, don't get caught giving racial slurs with your girlfriend. If you're going to do it, make sure that you're with your wife or you're alone. <laughs> so there you go. Have yeah. you um have you ever seen a DJ company acquire another DJ company and do it really well and like brand that 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 merger happened or that that you know, um, but they've taken over and, and it's worked out well, or have you, have you done it yourself? I have never done it. Uh, I bought a company called rent a band and we absorbed it and spit it. This was such a specific brand and it's still out there, even though the new owners have changed it to more like an SD, um, to downplay the spin and discs where that's the big thing. Right. I, I don't know what they're thinking with that, but the, to me, it's a really generic logo, but that's just my opinion. Um, we bought rent a band and we started co-branding it. So all of our ads in the wedding magazine said DJs, live entertainment, musicians, and everything else. Um, and then I know that Matt Radicelli from Rock the House in Cleveland has bought, I think he bought Selective Sound, Signature Sound, something, which was, a, Matt started out, as you know, as a, as a pretty much kind of a youth-orientated DJ and right. fell into the whole um, production world. Yeah. And then... Um, grew into audiovisual and production and such, but he bought it's either selective sounds or signature sounds, something like that, because they had a following in the wedding industry. So right. rather than rather than really try to push, 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 he just bought it. And mm. then he had a competitor called Zone DJs or Zone Entertainment, which was in the school market. And rather than compete against the guy, 
he wound up buying that as well. Now, in that situation, from what I've heard from talking to people that know more about it than I do, he did it so that Zone could remain more of the affordable school orientated company. Rock the House could be the larger production company. And so he was able to service them with two different brands and kind of compete against himself. Right. Um, Jeffrey Craig had, um, he had pure energy entertainment, which was what happened was he had had Jeffrey Craig entertainment. And just like a lot of people leave, um, he convinced one of his people at the time not to leave, but to build a brand around him. Mm -hmm. So he wound up having one or two MCs that were specific to just their pure energy company. Right. So administratively it was still all put together with Jeffrey Craig, although it had its own set of books, it had its own um, more or less dancers, you know, so he had two different brands and then he eventually wound up buying into total entertainment, which was a different entity as well. And, you know, and that was one of the big concerns because in New York, you know, everybody, I mean, Heart to Heart was big at one time. Shazam was big at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Double G wound up being bought out by Total Entertainment as well. So I remember having been friends with them. I was in the meeting and everyone was saying, well, what, what are we supposed to tell people? Who bought who or whatever? And was, I turned to Jeffrey and I whispered, I go, why don't you tell people the brands are the brands? Right. All you've done is you've merged administratively. So mm -hmm. you're now sharing offices you're sharing you know bookkeepers you're sharing accountants you know right right the brands are still the brands and right. that's what they did and they they still operate as different entities to this day jeffrey is now sold everything but his shares in total entertainment um but he does have another company that he is partners in called explosive which is in the manalapan new jersey area and then he's mm -hmm. got total which is doing 14, 15 million dollars a year in business up in in New York and right. does a lot of the upscale New York socialite and heavy duty Wall Street players and and the wealthy bar and bat mitzvah clientele. So a lot of the wedding or I'm sorry, a lot of the mitzvahs that you're seeing with celebrity musical acts that they put out are a lot of them are Jeffries. So, right. So that's that. So that's when with your with you doing more of like acquisition type stuff and the rebrand. But what would you say for DJ companies? Like when is a good time? What when's the point of that they should look at possibly rebranding? When things are down, if there's been a shift in the business, I mean when what would you if you had to advise a DJ company when they should be rebranding? I think it depends up? on what the company name is and what the desire is. Now, if you listen, did you listen to Mike and Joe's uh, podcast today? I did. Mm -hmm. So they brought on Mitch Taylor for the first time, their first guest. And I thought that he had a really good point that he called his company tailored weddings, or he called it originally tailored entertainment. And then he shifted it to tailor weddings, but he doesn't ha he specifically does not have it based solely just around him and by sheer coincidence mike walter's first partner was eric taylor and he said like if he had, if the company had originally been called eric taylor and associates or what have you mm -hmm. he doesn't know if he would have kept that brand the way that he kept the elite entertainment brand right and right. so i think it also depends on the style you know if right. you're going to be brian b official like Right. You're just going to make as much money as you can and sock it away in your 401k and your right. retirement. And there is no exit strategy other than proper money management. Sure. Um, I started the Keith Christopher Entertainment Group because when I had my falling out with my partner at Spinning, everybody had said repeatedly over the course, it happened on a Friday. And the whole weekend, as the word got out amongst friends and family, everybody said, nobody even knew you had a partner. You were the name and the face of the company excuse me for 19 years, what's she going to do? And I kept hearing name and face, name and face, name and face, name and face. So my brother's a graphic designer and he designed our logo, which if you guys haven't seen it, it's a big K and a big C and then spelled out in cool, funky font is uh, or clean font is the Keith Christopher entertainment group. And so I didn't design it to be mm -hmm. named after me, but it served a purpose at the time. And at that time, my goal was to, um, to get bookings right away. And right. so was the name in the face of the other company. 
That's what I did. And here's the other part of it. My partner in it has since sold it to one of the DJs there. So it's technically in its third business owner Mm -hmm. and it's still going, you know, I don't know if they're doing a hundred parties a year, 500 parties a year. They're looking 500 feet away from me. And I don't, I don't really hear their name very often, Hmm. you know, maybe once a month, you know, and at one point in time we were doing 800 events a year. So I know that they sold all of their big equipment. They're not doing bar and bat mitzvahs. They don't have dancers. They don't have the production element. He really mm-hmm. streams it down to a stack them and rack them cookie cutter DJ company, which again, I, you know, everyone's got a different design and yeah. maybe he's making money. Maybe he isn't. I know that he doesn't have the impact that, that we used to have that, that much I know, but I also will say, I don't know anybody who has the impact that they used to. Right. Right. So, so that's all. Yeah. I mean, for me, we, we, we did do a rebrand and there was a step up in quality, but we felt like our logo was, was in dire need of an up, up, a refresh. So we, we decided to do a rebrand. I think it was now two years ago. Um, and it was also a philosophy shift too, uh, just a freshness a fre- it was like putting on, like we had a lot of the same folks, but we wanted to kind of just step up our game and we all decided to do it together. And right. so for us, that was kind of the, the reason why we did it. And, um, you know, I think those things can be helpful because they can, um, bring a set of energy, new energy to a place, you know, just it feels fresh, even though maybe some of the same things are on there, but if your still behavior is still the same, it may not translate as a refresh. So just making sure that you're, you're kind of evolving with that rebrand as well. You know what I mean? Rather, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, We're in the process of redoing up. our, uh, photography studios website again different concept more up to date more everything specifically for that reason did you freeze up you're there you're not there it does look like he froze he did freeze i know he had to go right at he had to go <laughs> right at the end of the show but he may have bolted earlier and was like ah they yeah, won't even I'm know i'm here. gone yeah yeah he's so so that's brian b everybody that look at that face. Yeah. It's like, wait, you want the Macarena? What? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we should have a contest so, to have them. Uh... Now, now, John, you're in a unique place for this. You've got Distracky News, mm-hmm. but you've added a photo booth section of the paper. So yep. you're definitely a very clear niche um, publication. But, you know, the question being is as you talk to photo booth manufacturers and even trying to get photo booth people on, are people going, I'm not a DJ. I'm not a DJ. You don't have anything for me. I'm not a DJ. Actually, I haven't gotten that uh, too terribly much. And I've had some of the some of the photo booth folks who met from Photo Booth Expo buy the e-edition. So it's okay. cheaper to do the e-edition. And they're like, yeah, we just take it and print those two pages and and read through the uh, the that section of the uh, the paper. Okay. And then occasionally they'll they'll drift and check the uh the in essence uh, the headlines or the titles of the other articles and right which i did get my paper today there it is and that's one of the as you're holding that up the front cover one of the changes we made earlier this year is adding more of the titles to that front cover because it was surprising how when we start adding those titles to the front cover you have people who see that because that that's the first one that opens on the e-versions and right. then they, they're jumping back and such to check out what what uh, have been kind of highlighted on the cover. So right. it's, it's I didn't look at the cover. I all I did was I flipped real quickly over to uh what would that be? Uh, and I don't have a copy here to you <laughs> there in the What you want everybody is you want page five. Okay. It's written by a brilliant a brilliant, brilliant young, young scribe. Absolutely. I mean, Pulitzer Prize winning or then, something. Uh, you also, because we're coming up to the end of our hour, you want to also go ahead and take advantage of your discounted price. That's right. Look at all of these presenters and save $50 by using promo code. Distracting news. Actually, I just had somebody message a few minutes ago asking for that promo code. So I. Very good. Hope they get they caught that and uh, and have that and they can use that and save themselves fifty dollars and we can see them in three weeks. You said is that three what you... weeks? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't wow. it? Wow. So 
I feel like I'm like putting the Christmas tree lights up on the house and we're yeah. getting closer and closer. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're consistently uh, growing. So folks, so especially if you're in the driving distance of Chicago, you have no excuse. I mean, I would pretty much give you a money back refund, but I can't control what you would do with that knowledge. All I know is that you couldn't, for what you would spend to come, you're you're going to, if you take the time and invest, you are so totally 100% going to be pleased. Whether there's a thousand people there or 500 people there, the bottom line is that here we're focused every, everything around the education. All of the networking in the hallways are just an added bonus. But I know that uh, we are killing ourselves to bring you a first class show in a first class city and you will not under any circumstances be disappointed. And Next month's issue is going to be have to our actual show program is going to be printed inside of next month's issue. So if you're not there and you get this Jackie news, all you're going to do is open it up and regret not being there. The because all you're going to see is amazing content and, you know, terrific sponsors and uh, fun parties. And then, of course, the month after, I'm going to have to do a recap, which is just going to be like rubbing salt on the wound. And then, um, you know, and God we're going to we'll be announcing 2019. We'll be and, and we'll be going live from the show on a couple of occasions. So that's true. We'll be we got that bathroom cam set up. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Mm, awesome. Kidney bathroom stones. Self- <laughs> burning sensation when you pee. No, I'm sorry. Playing, actually, um, after after having Scott Faber on last night and talking games, we'll play our, our new favorite game. What did you drink last night by the smell of your? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> I was just about to say I'm totally <laughs> inappropriate. So even I have a sensor, folks. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so it. once again, I'm going to uh, say goodnight like I always do, which is please, folks, uh, invest in yourself. Invest in your company. Invest in your future by coming to the Marquee Show July 9th through the 11th. You can go to marqueeshow.com for all of the information. Our show agenda is up there. And with the exception of two little tweaks that we have to make, everything is up there. You'll see who's presenting at what time. Um, If you're watching this because you're friends with me on Facebook, but you're not a disc jockey, Monday is all business. I don't care if you own a machine shop or an auto body shop. Monday is 100% all about business. And if you're in the special event business, you definitely want to be there. So we have a day pass on Monday for uh, $200. You can use your disc jockey news promo code to get $50 off of that price even. So you can come for $150. You've got a box lunch included, and um, that's that. And I am not going to shave my beard until the show is over or Christmas hits, one or the other. So so that's where we're at. So um, anything from you, John? I think you? we're great. It's time to go and, and kind of hang out for the rest of the uh, the rest of the week. And then I've got a big wedding on Saturday I will be doing. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. And to you and to all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Okay. I hope you have a great time with your family. Um, I have no children, so I will just be at home curled up in a ball. So. <laughs> so good night, everybody, and God bless. We'll see you all next Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.